Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and today I want to talk about Fleabag and some classic novels. If you're not aware of Fleabag, where have you been the past six years? This is a sitcom, a six-part comedy drama. I'm not entirely sure on the correct classification of this TV series, but it is a British television series that first ran in 2016 that was series one, and then the second series came out in 2019. Um, it was uh, written, starring, and I believe produced by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who plays the main character, whose name we don't know in the show, but who I'm going to be referring to as Fleabag. And the show follows her, a sort of middle-class millennial type, um, as she goes through her life. And, uh, you know, because it's a comedy, there's a lot of ups and downs, a lot of uh, hilarious situations she gets herself in, and but also a lot of heartfelt drama. And a lot of that drama comes from her various sexual exploits, which, uh, you know, are the, the, the cringe in Fleabag. It's not the sort of show you want to watch with your parents unless you enjoy suffering through some of these sex scenes. Other than her sort of issues with men, there's also the drama that comes from the side of her family, in particular her stepmother and her older sister, Claire. And when I first watched Fleabag, it immediately reminded me of certain classic novels. And when I recently rewatched series one, I was struck even more by the similarity between Fleabag and three novels in particular that I want to tell you about today. If you're familiar with my channel, you've probably heard me talk about all three of these novels before. The um, inspiration to this video, by the way, came from an article I read in the uh, Jasna Journal, that's the Journal of the Jane Austen Society of North America. And this article is called Sororal Misperception in Sense and Sensibility and Fleabag and it's by Talia M. Vestry. This journal article is uh, available for free, so I'll link it in the description box, and I highly recommend you read it, because the author makes a really compelling point in drawing parallels between Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility and Fleabag, in particular with regard to the sisters and the relationship between the sisters in both of these stories. But when I uh, watch Fleabag, the novel that came to mind first of all, the one that I saw the strongest parallels to was Howard's End by E.M. Forster. Howard's End was published in 1910 and it is the story of two sisters that are sort of upper middle class, fairly well off and well educated, well opinionated and it deals with their problems with men and with society, and to some degree, but a lesser degree than in Fleabag, with their own family. The older sister is called Margaret, and she is the sort of calmer, responsible, more level-headed one. And the younger sister, Helen, is the wilder, romantic, more impulsive one. Margaret doesn't like to rock the boat, societally speaking. She wants to live a sort of quiet life. And when she falls in love with a very straight-laced, older, middle-class man from a sort of merchant family, the tension between her sort of bohemian side, which is even stronger in her sister Helen, and his family becomes the main conflict in the novel. So just like in Fleabag, you have these two sisters that appear very different on the surface. Uh, you've got Fleabag, who is, you know, the wild child who um, has casual sex and tries to make her guinea pig themed cafe a thing and has a very dark secret in her past that leads her to self-sabotage to, uh, to a degree. And then you've got the sister Claire, who I think is the older sister, but I'm not 100% on that. But Claire is uh, much more level-headed, tries to fit in, is incredibly successful at what she does, but incredibly stressed about it too. Just the way that the sisters interact in Fleabag and the way that the sisters interact in How It's End reminded me so much of each other. And I really see Fleabag as a sort of modern, not adaptation of How It's End, but a modern take on the same idea of placing two relatively privileged women, both in London, um, trying to make their way in the world, uh, but with wildly different approaches. But then when you dig deeper, you notice that uh, underneath their personalities, they are actually the same. 
And you get that in, uh, in Howard's End, just like you do in Fleabag, where both sisters are pulled in different directions, but then when it really matters, uh, they are each other's first priority. If you've not read Howard's End and you like that sort of conflict in Fleabag, then I would highly recommend that you do. Just like Fleabag, Howard's End is hilarious. Ian Forster is known for his very sort of biting, satirical sense of humour that I think tells you as much about Edwardian society as Fleabag does about modern English society. The second novel that I want to mention, and this is the one that sparked this whole video, is of course Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. This one uh, was published 100 years before Howard's End and 200 years before Fleabag in 1811. Again, if you want a really detailed analysis of the parallels between the sisters in Fleabag and the sisters in Sense and Sensibility, do check out the article that I linked in the description box. But uh, just to summarize where those parallels lie, just like in Fleabag, Sense and Sensibility is about two sisters, Marianne and Eleanor Dashwood. Eleanor, the older, is more level-headed, uh, thinks things through a little bit more and keeps her emotions nice and bottled up inside, whereas Marianne, the younger, is more exuberant, more romantic and uh, more uh, impulsive. Just like in Fleabag, the sisters, especially Marianne, uh, have some rather unsavoury affairs with men. I mean, unsavoury as far as you can write in a Jane Austen novel. And Marianne in particular falls for a man who is uh, not what society might deem entirely appropriate. And she gets her heart broken, um, as does the older sister Eleanor in the course of the novel. But how both sisters deal with this heartbreak and how they deal with, uh, well, what you could call their sexual exploits, again, all within the fairly tame context of a Jane Austen novel is very individualistic. Eleanor doesn't talk about it and Marianne kind of wallows in the pain. So you get this contrast again between the two sisters, the different approaches to life, the different approaches to men, but then when it matters, uh, deep down they hold on to each other and the relationship between them is as important or more important than their individual relationships with men. Just like Fleabag, Sense and Sensibility has a humour about it. It's not the funniest of Jane Austen's novels, but it has still got a layer of satire over top of the romance and the familial relationships. So just like in Fleabag, you'll find some um, hilarious mother figures in particular. You'll find step-parents and step-siblings that are just so much fun to read about. And uh, Jane Austen, satirizes her own Regency society, much in the same way as Phoebe Waller-Bridge uh, satirizes modern society in Fleabag. So again, you have the same components, the same ingredients in uh, Sense and Sensibility that I think you find in Fleabag as well. The last classic novel I want to talk about, and this is another one that I mention frequently because I really love it quite a lot, is I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. And this one is, I suppose, what we would today call a young adult novel published in 1948. Uh, the main character in this, Cassandra, is the younger sister in this case. And she is, on the one hand, she is the level-headed, thinking things through, kind of very practical one. But she is also a writer and therefore she's very fanciful and um, it likes to imagine her life as a novel, which funnily enough is also the case because she's literally the main character in a novel. Her older sister Rose is the more romantic one. She's the one who thinks with her heart first and... Um, In I Capture the Castle, the conflict between the sisters is not as extreme. Minerva, please don't eat my lights, please. Please don't eat them. She's eating them, isn't she? She's eating my lights. Thank you. In I Capture the Castle, the two sisters are not that outwardly different from each other. Um, and their bond is pretty strong from the start. And I like that about them, but like in Fleabag, you have the same themes of, you know, conflict between the sisters and the way they interact with the world, especially with the uh, men around them, because uh, conveniently at the beginning of the novel, 
some handsome bachelors <laughs> arrive at the ruined castle that they inhabit. You get a lot of discussions about sex, again, all within the context of a novel written in the 1940s, set in the 1930s, and the way that sex and, you know, love and relationships um, messes with the sisters and the secrecy that comes forth from these kinds of relationships. So overall, a wonderful novel. It's a lot more mellow than the other two that I've recommended. It is still funny. Uh, the voice is very strong in this one. It's a first-person novel. In fact, it's, um, it's a diary novel. We, we get the story through the diary entries of Cassandra in her diary. And Cassandra herself is 17 years old. So you get a lot of the sort of teenage sass and humor, a lot of uh, her observations about her family and about the people in her life and her really interesting life living in a ruined castle. So you get the humor as well. You get the familiar relationships, you get the sexual relationships, and all of that put together reminded me once more of Fleabag. There you have it, my three recommendations. If you like Fleabag, you might enjoy these three classics if you've not read them yet. If you have any other books to add to that list, post them in the comments. I'll be interested to know if you agree with me about these, if you disagree about these, or if you're a naughty cat waiting for her lunch. Hmm? Thank you for watching. Bye.